you are probably one of the top five followers in baseball on Instagram. Sweet. So I, I pulled up some pictures from your Instagram feed. You ready to check it out? Sweet. <laughs> This morning on the way to the stadium. I took a luggage truck. I woke up too late <laughs> and I, I missed the bus. So I was gonna get an Uber and then the, the guy was like, hey, now nah, we'll take you, we'll take you. I was like, all right. He rode the equipment oh. truck over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's better if you rode in the back. <laughs> With the luggage? <laughs> Just getting all banged up and stuff. <laughs> gotta be a part of everything. Be a part of the whole entire process that no one ever sees. Everyone just sees the major leagues and sees the field and all this kind of stuff. They have no idea that guys are underneath hitting, stretching, uh, trying to get their bodies ready just to come out here and perform for actual 12 minutes of concentration. All right. Ooh, <laughs> the fat cow, the cow coming towards the donut. <laughs> Someone sent that to me and I was like, I gotta repost it. The cow just like walked in. <laughs> That's me as soon as I see a donut. Yeah, I got it. I'm coming. <laughs> but like I said, living out where I live, um, in Maryland, you know, you got cows out there, and I've definitely fed the cows. Uh -huh. So it's kind of, it, it's kind of, uh, yeah, kind of heartwarming. So one of your best performing posts yeah. actually was with the donuts. I'm telling you, man, I'm sentimental towards donuts. Who doesn't like donuts? The people that don't like donuts is, is like saying you don't like breathing. You can't be friends with somebody who doesn't like donuts. Yeah, it's like that Maya Angelou post. You can't be friends with someone who doesn't like to laugh. You can't trust them. If you don't like donuts, like seriously, you might like tasty cakes. You gotta like something sweet, okay? I know sugar's bad, I get all that, but... Damn it, I want some donuts. You love donuts so much that you even put some on your cleats. My donut monarchs, you feel me? Those are the Homer Simpsons. These were going around social media too, dude. These are yeah, a big hit, man. They still are a big hit, but I might wear them today. I brought them. And Players Weekend, Candy Custom Kicks. Man. Look at those, La Gente's, the Monarchs. I mean, if you look at them, they're Monarchs and every dad in America has had them. You're gonna have them soon. You'll catch them around the stadium if you just look. Trust me, look down at people's feet, you'll see the Monarchs. Those weren't as heavy as I thought. They had a couple hits the first day, the second day they didn't have no hit, so I didn't wear them the third day. You're trying to bring these bad boys back. Hell Not yeah. just yourself, but like throughout the league and Little I mean, League. Everybody, I want, I want people to wear Monarchs. I want to, so for Christmas this year, I'm giving my brothers and my cousins all the men in my family, I'm giving them all Monarchs. First off, they're 50 bucks, so I'm saving a lot. And they're comfortable. I think those are like 4E wide. Wow. <laughs> Space shuttles. So I'll see you on Christmas. Yeah. 11 and a half. Now, <laughs> now you also love yeah. cooking. This is years ago. My, so my best friend, Charity, we came, me and my wife came up to New York. We were making pasta. And it was good. We all made our own pastas, made raviolis and, and um, How'd it come out? We, oh, it came out great. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. Wouldn't expect anything less. Phenomenal. And you get it popping in your own kitchen. Oh yeah, for sure. The real sous chef. Me? The best sous chef in America. <laughs> the best sous chef in America. And here you are with your family, your Christmas photo. In San Diego! You see it, son? <laughs> Only reason why we wore long sleeve pajamas is because we took a picture. I took that stuff off. And this next one, boom. You feel Roll me? Back. 14 Eight. years old right there. Bayo. In Spanish, bayo. It means handsome. We were sitting on La Jolla Cove. I remember those batting gloves, this is 1999. So those batting gloves are some of my favorite pair of batting gloves that obviously you can't find today, but. So that's a good spot to take photos in front of the water, right? Man, what? Christmas photo, See, now this photo. is this is the shores. This is the shore side. This is me spending my money where I live at. This is the team taking transportation over to La Jolla Cove, because we couldn't, the other, otherwise they ain't allowing us there. Uh -huh. So it's two transformations that, you know, I, I get that 14, take a picture in La Jolla Cove, and at 33, I get to live in La Jolla. Some more cool pictures. You got these baseball cards. I sign a lot of baseball cards uh, in the off season for tops and collectors and all that stuff. And some of them are really, really cool. A lot of the one-on-ones are really cool. They're thick. And it's crazy though, is I sign the card, but whoever gets them asks me again, can you sign this? I'm like, I signed the card. <laughs> it's like, what, what do you want me to sign it twice? So for? they want two autographs yeah. on one. <laughs> a lot of people want a lot of things, man. So that's crazy. So you go from this baseball photo to actually having your own baseball yeah. card. That's gotta yeah. be another My first baseball crazy card? dream, right? Oh man, this whole process has been a, a dream. It's been a fantasy. I mean, no one, no one understands what it is to be a major league player. And no one understands what it's to be a major league player that, you know, like myself has sustained time. And there's plenty of players on the other side who've done the same. And it's a dream come true. It's a pretty sweet card. You're known for throwing a pie to some people. I miss the pies. It was a part of the, it was a, it was a culture. We started in 09 and it just graduated. And if you see, I'm really toned in that picture. I got a great physique. But, Straight uh, <laughs> beach body workouts out in San Diego. You feel me? <laughs> Lifting sand. But um, it, it's, it's great that, it was a part of, it was just a part of our celebrations. And 
You know, I may have hit a couple people too hard, <laughs> but it was part of it, and it was part of the excitement. The fans really, really loved it, really enjoyed uh, everything of it. They looked forward to it. You know, it was one camera after the game, post-game interview. It turned out to be, you know, 10 to 15 cameras, and then the fans stayed just for that moment because they knew I was coming with a pie. I tasted every pie before I, I uh, launched it into someone's face. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a couple more. This one, you always got to reflect. Here yeah. you go. My fall league jersey. I still have that jersey. My mom finally gave it back to me. My mom got all my original stuff, all my first, and it took, uh, oh, painstaking to get all that stuff back. She still has my first hit ball and my first home run ball. But everything else I had to get back. She's like, no, I want it. Like, Can I get it back, woman? And she's like, no. Eh, a couple bribings, a couple vacations, some patience. So you were able to and get three like, jerseys okay. back from her? <laughs> I got, yeah. Because you got this one and you got I, the other one. I got number 25 and the number 10. And I got those, all those jerseys back from her, yep. And, and trust <laughs> me, that woman's a tough negotiator. <laughs> I learned my good negotiating from my mama. You might have to hire her as an agent. <laughs> my mama does my taxes. She does the first part of my taxes. I start making more money, she's like, yeah, it's a little different, son. <laughs> so with Instagram, you also do a great job of raising yeah. awareness, and you always have. My tailgate. My sixth annual tailgate is coming up. The best part about it, though, is the Raiders is coming. Oakland, a team that, you know, obviously I'm from San Diego, so I hate the Raiders. CC is supposed to be at the tailgate. Obviously, he's a big Raiders fan. He's going to get a lot of flack for it. And I love his commentators that he said, I'm 6'7". What are they going to do to me? <laughs> they gonna beat me up? No. <laughs> what, what, what it is? What you want? <laughs> but uh, the tailgate's been amazing. Low Cash has came out the last two years. They've been their their music has been blowing up. But what I what I called it is Baltimore helping Baltimore. I don't ask my outside friends. Um, I don't ask my agents in L.A. I don't ask people in different cities. I ask Baltimore to help your city. Everybody's saying you know in, in all cities, New York has problems. San Diego has problems. But if you invest in your city, invest in the kids in your community you can reap that benefit. If you can change the culture of these 10, 11 to 14 year old kids, change their mindset as they get to 15, 17 and, and become an adult, that goes a long way. But a lot of people are scared to talk to, the, to talk to these kids because, now I don't know why, to be honest, why people are scared. Me, I'm never, I've never been scared to talk to these kids because every, me, I see myself in these kids. I see kids that just need, just need some help, need a, need a branch of, uh, of life. And, a lot of people don't understand, living in the inner city, living in the hood is not easy. It's just, it's stressful, it's depressing. You don't have resources. I mean, a lot of these kids, they need schooling simply to get meals. But, you know, a lot of the upper echelon, they care, but they, a lot of people don't care for these kids. And me and my wife, my family, we've, we've been fortunate enough, obviously been blessed on the field to be able to, uh, to do things off the field. And it's just been rewarding to, to see um, Kids you don't know, but kids that are very similar to you have, have an opportunity now. And that's all I try to do is create an opportunity for these kids to do something. Now, whatever they want to do is up to them, but I'm just trying to give them an opportunity to, to be somebody. And it's awesome to, to see these kids that want to be somebody and fight to be somebody. So, so now whether it's giving back, creating fun hashtags like stay hungry, oh, yeah. which is huge. It, it, What's your favorite part about Instagram? My favorite part of Instagram, I think is just, it's the interaction obviously with fans, but it's the awareness that you can create. Just all social media in general, it, the, the reach you can create with it. Um, you know, like I said, I've been able to meet some great people. I've helped out and they've helped me out in, in various things. Um, I've been able to mentor random high school kids. I've, always, I've told people I've always been open book and I've had a lot of high school kids just hit me up send me their videos of them hitting and hey can you give me any idea and I tell them all the time you better than me let me <laughs> can you give me any tips but it's like the reach that you have with it is something you can't describe and it's it's cool to be able to reach out to the people that support you the people that come out and appreciate your work and like said obviously you have to take the good with the bad and there's more good than the bad um, but it, it's it's always been cool to interact with the people that really support you and, and uh, find your craft to be to be amazing. It's time for the plug. Why should somebody follow you? I don't want a plug. You don't want a plug. I don't give you a don't need one. Me. Hell no, your content damn. speaks for yeah. itself. You're lucky I let you into my life. <laughs> <laughs>